Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Unreal Return to Napoli. On this episode, well, the sign says Terra Neo Mining Station North, but the actual name of this level is called Neb's Crossing. And of course, first we have to deal with the lesser fruit, but thankfully they give us a few boxes here. Uh, just remember he's behind the boxes and he, they'll try to put him up there to surprise you. But if you use the boxes wisely, like I'm doing here, then he won't attack you and he'll just die. And thankfully, we, uh, thankfully we've got a car clip there, so that's nice. Kind of a weird acronym, CAR. Um, and yes, it would be an acronym because it spells out a word. If it didn't spell out a word, then it would be an initialism, I believe. I believe that's how it goes. We also have a Scarge up here. We're going to deal with several Scarge in this level. And it's kind of weird because, you know, we you know, dealt with the Scarge Queen, so why are we dealing with Scarge? But that will probably be addressed soon enough. Also, don't go out too far. This mantle will spawn behind you. And I realize I wasted a few rounds of ammunition on the mantle, but they're giving us automatic rounds like candy, so I'm not really too worried about wasting them. Now, this area is a big central pool, and it's fairly deep. And the central pillar actually has a couple of items that we really need or really want. And the pool has some items as well that would be really useful. And also, this central pool has kind of a tunnel that connects between this section and another section kind of later in the level. And that tunnel will actually access it sooner rather than later. Uh, actually also has a dead end to it. We won't access the entire tunnel because I don't want to run out of scuba gear. But... Um, We'll see it momentarily, but first I gotta deal with this scar. Yes, I realize I'm wasting ammo a lot. I really don't care about wasting ammo at this point. I'm noticing in Return to Napoli, they're really giving me a lot more ammo than I really need. And the dispersion pistol, well, it'll, it'll, it'll recharge itself, so that's not a huge deal. Now this pool does have a few enemies in it, so you do have to be on the lookout for that. Now we hear the breathing of the scuba gear. The scuba gear will last us long enough. There's actually a few crates down there. Uh, the crates actually have something that's useful as well, but we'll get to those in a moment too. But first I want to check out the top of this pillar like a moment uh, mentioned before. And we get the flat cannon for our troubles, so that's very nice that we get that kind of a weapon early on. Also, if you want to exit the uh, pool, you can just go up here. But, I don't know if I want to do that just yet. Because there's some actually, uh, there's actually some good things down here as well. But let's take care of these uh, fish first. The native fauna that wants to kill us. I like that in this game they uh, have a lot more fauna. You know, that want to kill us and want to harm us. Here we get a grenade launcher. This is a new weapon to Unreal Return to Napoli. The grenade launcher has primary and uh, secondary fire. The primary fire pretty much launches a grenade at your target and explodes on contact, or explodes after a certain time period. The secondary fire of the grenade launcher is uh, such that you launch it first and then you press the secondary fire again and it will actually explode the grenade. So. If you wanted to trap somebody with a grenade, well, there you go. You can do that. We got a message here. Something about Eldora's well. I don't know if Eldora's well or not. Maybe she's just not feeling good. Haha. <laughs> but anyway, check the pots for goodies. We've already read the book. Time to jump back in the water. Now there are two directions in this long tunnel that we can go. One direction is going to take us all the way back to where we were, and the other direction is going to take us to a new area. And I'd rather just go this way because, well, if we go the other way, it's going to take us uh, through a short, kind of a shortcut. Well, not really a shortcut, but it's going to skip past a couple of things that I'd like to show you guys. We do have a scourge over here. And I don't like the fact that this tree blocks more than it really looks like it should. 
But what are you going to do? Time to use the grenade launcher. Let me kind of show what this does. The tree looks like it took most of the damage. So that's what the grenade launcher does. And we already got some splash damage from the scars, so he's going to fall pretty soon. There we go. Making sure he's dead. There's another Scarge here, of course. They're really sneaky in this level, or in this uh, expansion pack for the game. They give you enemies that try to sneak up on you, or they give you enemies that are in sneaky locations so that, you know, you have to deal with them a little more creatively. Well, if that makes any sense. I mean, you have to know either know where the enemies are beforehand, or you have to be really um, attentive because they will try to ambush you. There's another Scarge. And we have yet another Scarge, so... Where are these Scarge coming from? Took care of the Scarge Queen, didn't we? Or were these just, you know, out on the planet? Or is there another source for Scarge? It's a good question. Maybe we'll answer it in the future. I could hear the scarge in here, so I was trying to avoid it, but at any rate, I noticed him at that point. There's also another scarge in here, so they give us kind of another scarge in another tight location. Remember what I said in the first episode? Well, not the first episode. In the uh, episode for, um, what was it, Edgenopoly, how the enemies are kind of placed in tight corridors or tight locations, so you have to deal with them like that? Well, yeah, they do that quite a, quite a bit, actually, in this game. And come to think of it, they really do that a lot in the original Unreal, but for some reason I remember a lot more open spaces with Scarge and uh, lesser brutes and things like that, at least in the beginning half of the game. But of course, again, this assumes you've already played the game Unreal and you've got a little bit of skills behind your back, or under your belt, that is. Here I'm looking for that other Scarge to make sure he's gone. I think I hit a shark there, but I wasn't sure. And the Scarge can swim to some degree. We got plenty of our scuba belt left, so that's nice. Or it's not scuba belt. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking of shield belt. We've got plenty of our scuba gear left. Shield gear and scuba belt. I don't know why I tried to kill that. Maybe because it just felt like it. I wanted to also show you in the water if there's anything in here, but there really isn't. Because you might be wondering, well, you know, don't they put secrets in the water sometimes? Yes, sometimes they do, but in this case they don't. But of course you jump into it, and you gotta get back out somehow. And the only way out, well, the only way out that's nearby is either that tunnel that leads us back to the, uh, the pool with a centralized pillar or this plank of wood right here. Strategically well placed piece of wood. How nice of them to put it there. And that last piece of wood is way too long. It should be bending in the middle if it's that long. But of course there's limits in this engine. I mean there wasn't really that much physics to be involved in the engine so. There you go. Haha. -ha. The problem with the grenade launcher, I find, is that, I mean, it's good for a large group of enemies, but for an enemy that moves around really fast, you have to be really um, precise with your grenade launching abilities. And there you have it. He's gone. I like the little cart with some nolly fruit in there. Is that a cow next to the well? Kind of a nice little village. Or a farm, I suppose. Checking my corners just to make sure I'm not ambushed by a tentacle. Even though I probably would have heard it, but that's alright. Sorry I skipped through that really quickly. You can pause it or skim back if you need to reread that. Just a little bit more of a backstory. Yeah. 
I was just taking a look at the cows there. There's a nice little uh, chimney behind the building too. A little nice touch. If you take the right path, it will actually uh, lead you back to that central pool. This is actually the bridge that goes over that uh, doorway that we went under earlier. So like I said, this really is a crossing. You know, you actually have to cross the area a bit. I'm kind of using their, uh, the crawls, well, attacks to explode the barrels, even though I really don't have to. But they've got a more powerful uh, dispersion pistol than I do, so, you know. It'd be nice if they attacked each other. And they give us a crawl pretty early. If you remember in Unreal, the crawl weren't given to us until well after the Sun Spire. You know. And the crawl are good enemies. I mean, they're not too difficult. But we get to deal with more of these lizards here, so isn't that nice? I suppose you could use a grenade launcher in the secondary fire, but I kind of wanted to put, uh, put my, uh, sorry, I kind of wanted to put some distance between myself and the lizards as much as possible. And I like with the ASMD how it just pushes them back like that. Because they are fast, they're like little velociraptors. It's like Jurassic Park or something, you know? That's kind of a neat little piece of trivia. In Jurassic Park, the original Jurassic Park in the early 90s, the Velociraptors were actually practical effects. They weren't CGI. They weren't computer graphics. So. Sometimes I think practical effects in movies can be a lot better than computer graphics, but computer graphics have improved quite a bit in the last couple of years. So, But that's another tangent. I was kind of looking to see if there's any more lizards around here, but there really weren't. But I do want the ASMD core. One of the wells is kind of a dead end, and uh, that's where one of the tunnel leads to, but uh, I'm not worried about it. After a leap of faith, I'm pausing to record a log entry. I'm still shaken up after running into the Scar and their filthy minions. I guess I thought I'd seen the last of them when I killed the Scar Queen on the mother ship. It seems like an eternity ago. Is there another colony nearby? Where are they coming from? This is like a recurring nightmare. Still no sign of the Prometheus. Time to move on. And that wraps up this episode of Let's Play Unreal Return to Napoli. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.